Good evening and welcome to worship. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Pastor Tricia is uh, under the weather, but as luck would have it, there's a spare pastor hanging around town, so it's a pleasure to be with you again uh, this week. The order of service is found printed in your bulletin. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. <clears throat> Please join in singing our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art.
service continues with the order for confession and forgiveness. Would the congregation please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment but I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. In his stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in the firmament of his power. Let everything that has breath Praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Please join in singing our song of praise, number 543. You may be seated. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, 
Lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First reading is from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I'm referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. You Philippians indeed know that in the early days of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs more than once. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that accumulates to your account. I've been paid in full and have more than enough. I am fully satisfied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're not ten healed. Where are the other nine? When we associate a scripture passage with a particular day of the church year, it can be really easy to kind of pass right over the story and the remarkable episode that's presented. And this story of the ten lepers, I think, is a good case in point. 
Year after year, we hear this story at our Thanksgiving services. And so we focus on the thankful leper and the nine who were not. We ponder themes of gratitude. We consider the implications of the Samaritan being the only one who showed his thankfulness. And we kind of breeze right past the fact that Jesus healed 10 people with nothing more than a word. He simply spoke to them, and their lives were changed forever. Now here were 10 guys whose lives were over. They were shunned and pushed to the edges of society. They weren't allowed to participate in the communal life of their people, not for a 10-day quarantine, but for the rest of their lives. They couldn't touch another human being. They were unclean outcasts. Their disease was too dangerous, too contagious, too horrifying to allow them to mix in society. It was a living death that these 10 men had been experiencing. So they were forced to live as beggars, relying entirely on the generosity of those who had once been their neighbors and friends to drop them a few coins, maybe a loaf of bread. They couldn't work. They couldn't provide for themselves. They had become those who could only take from society, never able to give anything back because their situation prevented it. I suspect those 10 men said some form of thank you many, many times a day. Every time someone showed them even a tiny shred of human kindness. Every time someone acknowledged in any way that they were human beings, not just walking diseases. All day long, they said thank you for the things their friends and neighbors could take for granted. They said thank you for a little bit to eat, for a kind word for any human contact at all. Now, most of us have not experienced that kind of marginalization. Most of us have not known extreme poverty or been an absolute social outcast, but maybe we've experienced the little bit of embarrassment of realizing too late that we don't have enough cash in our wallets to cover dinner and having to rely on those we are with to cover us. Or we've known what it's like to not have a whole closet full of brand new clothes when school starts in the fall, forced to wear things we wore last year. Or we've known what it means to be a little bit awkward and not quite fit in with those around us. Or we've felt the sting of judgment when it's discovered that our families aren't quite perfect. Maybe we've felt the stairs, as we u- the stairs as we used a snap card or a food voucher when we couldn't quite make ends meet. We've probably all tasted little bits of the bitter fruit that those lepers ate every single day. Every single day, their entire lives were shaped by what they had lost. Every day they saw former friends and neighbors walk past them as if they weren't there or with looks of pity or judgment or maybe fear. Pity they came to resent, judgment they came to despise. That kind of life hardens a person. It makes a person suspicious, resentful, jealous, angry. The slimmest of margins, the smallest of errors, can land almost anyone in a situation of being pushed to the edge, being cast out of polite society. And these 10 men had experienced that firsthand. And then one day, Jesus showed up. 
And with nothing more than a word, with no big dramatic display, with barely even an acknowledgement of their situation, he healed them. He gave them their lives back. All he said was, go show yourselves to the priest. Nothing more. No word of compassion for their plight. No acknowledgement of how difficult their lives had been. No apology for the harshness of this world. Just go show yourselves to the priest. Imagine that. Imagine the power in that. With nothing more than a word, Jesus healed one of the most dreaded diseases of his time. With nothing more than a word, he restored to wholeness those who had experienced a brokenness that few of us can imagine. He simply said to them, get up and go. Show yourselves to the priest. And we assume... That's exactly what they did. We assume that nine of those lepers did exactly as they were told. They fulfilled the requirements. They did what Jesus told them to do, and in one way or another, they regained their place in the world. They went home to families they had lost, lives that had been taken from them. They went back to all they had once known. We're pretty quick to judge them for their lack of gratitude? How could they not return to give thanks to the one who had done such a marvelous thing for them? How could they not be appreciative for the great gift they'd been given? How could they not fall on their knees and praise the one who had saved them? But they were so caught up in their circumstances, so caught up in what had been taken from them, what they had already lost, that perhaps even this great gift that they were given didn't seem like that much of a gift. Why would they have to give special thanks for receiving what everyone else already had and took for granted? A normal life. Why should they fall down and praise for those things no one else ever recognized as gifts? But the one guy knew what had happened to him. He knew what a gift he'd been given. He knew how amazing it was to be given a new life. He knew how glorious restoration was. And he was still an outcast. He was a Samaritan, one not recognized as a member of God's family. Even if he had gone to the priest with the other nine, the priest might have declared that he'd been healed of leprosy, but he would never have declared that he was clean because he was not. He would not regain a place of prominence in Jewish society. He would continue to live on the edges. But now, he would live as one who had been redeemed one who had been healed, one who'd been given a marvelous gift. And he could not help but return to thank the one who had done this for him. The wondrous gift that Christ has given to you is even greater than what was done for those ten lepers. Because he's given you not just a restored old life, but a new and everlasting life. True to form, he doesn't do this with a flashy display. He doesn't do this with a big production. He does this by his word. By his word, he declares that your sins are forgiven. By his word, he promises you a new and everlasting life. By his word, he's made you a member of the family of God. At times we think we need more than that. A flashy display would be nice, an acknowledgement of how difficult life in this world can be. Well, that'd be okay. Some recognition that we have borne our griefs faithfully. That wouldn't be all bad. Like those nine, 
we may at times wonder why we would be expected to give thanks for something so basic, something as basic as life. It would be one thing if God blessed us with wealth or fame or success. It would be one thing if we had reason to think God had taken special notice of us. Then we might be moved to gratitude. But longevity, salvation, everlasting life, forgiveness of sins, aren't those kind of just the basics? Aren't they the least that God can do for us? Don't we have that coming to us? To say it so, so starkly is to show how ridiculous we are. It's to show how completely deluded we are about our situation. Because the creator of all that is doesn't owe us anything, not one thing. He doesn't have an obligation to make our path easier. He doesn't have a duty to make our sinful and rebellious lives a little more pleasant. He's not required to be nice to us. He doesn't have to give us everything we want, everything we think we deserve. Our sin destroyed our relationship with the one who made us, and now he doesn't owe us anything. And yet, this one chooses again and again and again to be your God. He chooses again and again to forgive your sins. He chooses again and again to wrap you in his embrace, to rescue you from the powers of darkness, to redeem you from the debts you've tallied. He chooses again and again to give you new and everlasting life. Our Father in heaven and his beloved Son choose you as their own. God refuses to leave you out on the margins, pushed to the edges by your sin. He refuses to leave you in the realm of condemnation and death. He refuses to let your sin or your doubt or your faithlessness or your ingratitude drag you into the abyss. Instead, he reaches into the darkness, reaches into your sin and uncleanness, reaches into the pit and pulls you back out. That's what he's doing for you today and every day. Every day your sin threatens to pull you under. Every day your faith is under attack. Every day you're tempted to turn away from the living God. And every day God in Christ Jesus is renewing his promise to you. He's pouring his faith into you. He's breaking the bonds of the sins that pull on you. Not because he has to. Not because he owes it to you. Not because it's the least he could do, but because he chooses you. He loves you. He forgives you every day. Thanks be to God for this marvelous gift. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of the day, number 447.
us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found printed in the bulletin. Would the congregation please stand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but also in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 557. You may be seated.